What's up, Average viewers? Today's review is going to start off with a dad joke. What do you get when you cross a beloved franchise with a steaming pile of cow dung? You get Lightyear. <laughs> get it? Because this movie's a joke. Click that subscribe button if you want more reviews by an average guy for the average person. But let's jump into my Lightyear review. You guys, is Disney playing a game with us right now? I mean, are they actively trying to be the most hated company in the world? Their stocks are plummeting. They've produced a bunch of garbage, they sabotage and taint their own classics and IPs, and they blame fans for it. It seems like they're attempting to test the line right now on how abysmal their content can be while still collecting a huge paycheck on it. But I digress, I'm here to review Lightyear, and you probably already have a hunch as to how this is gonna go. This will be a spoiler review because I wanna be specific and use examples from the movie to back up my opinion. There's not much substance to this movie, so there's not much to spoil, but consider yourself warned. Obviously, I'm aware that this movie is for kids, and maybe you'll tell me to shut up because I'm an adult male, and and you might be right, but I make it a point to try and see kids movies in a full theater so I can judge audience reaction. This movie got very few reactions from kids. There was no giddy laughter or shouts for joy or screams of excitement when something really cool happened. Now, why is that? Mostly because nothing really cool happened. For a kids movie, they don't really understand what kids like or want in movies or the things that might keep them engaged. There was a lot of setup, a lot of background without payoffs exciting enough for kids and simultaneously too shallow for adults. A lot of things aren't going to be understood by kids and not in a funny way like Shrek, but like in an ignorance way. Like the elderly ex-convict keeps mentioning her parole and a lot of kids are going to have no clue what she's talking about. I asked a few parents their impression and whether they feel like their kids or siblings would like this show and they said they don't think it would become their favorite movie or something that they would ask you to turn on. Pixar really thought they could pump out a sequel and just because it's buzz it would get the same love and treatment from kids but they failed to understand that the reason Toy Story is so loved is because it's a quality story with iconic voice acting, awesome characters, a lot of heart, and it's a unique concept. This is the most generic sci-fi movie I've ever seen, and they didn't even really try on the science. I really didn't buy that they sent Buzz off on a hyperspeed mission, and they really didn't think about time dilation. And then it had to be explained by some stupid AI robot. Tangent, why is the AI so dumb in this movie? Intelligence is in the name. I know they wanted to joke about Siri and Alexa and that sort of stuff, but it wasn't really doing it for anyone in the audience. The gags and jokes just weren't landing. It was sort of cringe. There was something incredibly rushed about this movie. It wasn't the story. It was more like individual moments never had time to marinate or sit with us and let us feel an emotion about it. I was never scared or worried for these characters. I never cared about what they felt about the situation. The reveals were poorly executed. Comedic timing was poor. Everything had an immediate resolution. Like when Buzz jumped off the ledge with the spark coil thing they needed, but he misses the edge. So Izzy immediately grabs him. There was no slow-mo, no suspense. It moved so fast I could hardly see that Buzz was in danger. Our voice acting is fine. It's not iconic. None of these performances will go down in history. Some people actually disagree and they say that the acting was subpar. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think about that. The reason they didn't want to use Tim Allen is because the movie tries to be meta at the beginning. That's a whole can of worms because technically introducing it into the universe that way messes with the canon and it has a lot of complications and contradictions, but you can watch someone else's video about that. Pixar did say that people were confused about the recast, so they put the title cards up to explain that Buzz is the toy that the movie is based off of and so the movie is going to have a different actor. But Ads McLean says, Tim is hilarious, but this character wouldn't work as well with him doing the Space Ranger voice. It wouldn't be as emotional. It just changes the tone of the movie. We were going for a more classic sci-fi film. Look, I understand if you wanted to change the actor for those reasons, but keep in mind, this movie is not emotional. It's not a classic sci-fi film, it's a generic one. Tim Allen should have been here to carry this movie. What are they saying he can't do an emotional performance? Have you seen any of the Toy Stories? It's a BS reason, and a lot of people are pretty sure Disney pulled another Gina Carano and they didn't cast Tim Allen because he openly supported a Republican candidate. Anyway, I digress. Something about the sound in this movie was wrong, and I mean, the sound design was there and the music was good, but it was just a little quiet. I asked my theater if they turned down the volume, and they said they think the studio is releasing them quieter for kids or whatnot, which is fine, I get it, but the dialogue was quiet. So they didn't remix the audio to make it suitable and safe for audiences, they just turned down the track. The problem with this is that it makes the movie non-immersive. You don't feel rockets taking off, you don't hear the rumble and explosions. It felt like I was watching this on my phone with my phone speaker. I wasn't immersed or awed by space at all. The sound was just another thing to contribute to this movie not ever being impactful or emotional. When Buzz finds out he's been gone for four years, the reveal is poor. It's not shocking, there's no weight behind it, no one even cares. 
buzz isn't shaken up. Whether you like or dislike Interstellar, you have to admit that the way they approach the emotion of time dilation is just top notch. Oh, and don't get me started on that BS excuse they use that they didn't know there would be time dilation. I mean, this crystal fuel cell hyper jump stuff has been used by the Space Rangers literally one year prior to the speed test. Time dilation must have had huge implications on their daily lives and their connection to Earth or whatever. I absolutely don't buy that. Izzy's junior training squad deal was kind of annoying, right? I mean, they were insanely stupid, unskilled, unqualified, and one-dimensional. Of course, Taika is funny, but that doesn't mean his character didn't grind my gears the same way that everyone did in the squad. Someone needs to tell the writers that juvenile, annoying, irritating does not equal funny, even for kids. The first time I ever heard an audience reaction or a chuckle was about... 35 minutes into the movie when the cat blows a dart out of its mouth. Speaking of which, the cat is actually the only good part about this movie. I hate talking animals in movies and I was dreading this cat from the trailer, but actually it's the best part of the movie. It's great comedic relief, pretty funny. Back to the shallowness of our characters. At one point, Buzz says, good job elderly ex-convict, and he's right. That's all she is. She's just an elderly ex-convict. That's all her character gets to be. There's no depth, backstory, character arc, nothing. Izzy sort of has one, but I think you'll agree that everyone's kind of shallow in this movie, which is unfortunate because Toy Story did such a great job at balancing an ensemble cast with well-defined characters who all have arcs. Think about Mr. Potato Head, Wheezy, Slinky. Their personalities are so well defined, I can literally recreate them and their voice and mannerisms in my head right now. Yet they all change and make hard decisions and contribute equally and uniquely to the story. I'm gonna talk about Zerg for a second. Zerg was really bad. He wasn't menacing or cool. We never even got a full body view of him to see what he looked like. They should have gone with the robe design from Toy Story. Again, Buzz himself puts it perfectly in the movie when he's being chased and he says, it, It's just a giant robot! Sorry, I know my Chris Evans impression of Buzz is horrible. But yeah, Pixar, you hit it right on the head again. Your villain, your antagonist, was just a giant robot. Nothing more, nothing interesting. Of course, it's revealed that Zerg is Buzz, which I literally rolled my eyes. I thought it was probably the worst thing they could have chosen to do, and probably the laziest. And you know what? He's still just a giant robot. Because they made him Buzz, they didn't try to flesh out his character and motivations and make us sympathize with him, or basically anything that people do to craft a good villain. They basically said, oh, it's Buzz, that's a cool reveal, that's enough. But it wasn't, and it wasn't a cool reveal. Again, it was just another moment that had no breathing room or sense of pace. Then they went for the same cliche in the stupid bad boss fight if that's what you can call it where old buzz goes you and i are the same really overused way of trying to build sympathy for a villain also huge plot hole in my opinion maybe i'm wrong but young buzz says to old buzz what about izzy she had a life Hawthorne had a family, and old Buzz has no idea about Izzy or anything like that. But that can't be true, because when old Buzz succeeds his hyperspeed mission, he lands and it's the other male admiral that's there to try and arrest him, which means Hawthorne had died and had a family and everything had happened already. Moving on, for a space epic, there's really nothing epic about it. This movie is really bad at scope and scale. Space doesn't feel big, it doesn't feel populated or like anything goes on. I mean, the Space Rangers lost an entire ship full of hundreds of some of their best and brightest and there's never even an attempt to communicate with them or space rangers hq or whatever attempting to reach out but there's an issue with it no the movie just ignores it there's hundreds of people stranded on a planet and we don't get to see them worry about being stranded or about whether they'll have their lives back or see their families or loved ones again. When old Buzz goes to the future, there's no civilization he has to contend with. He literally walks onto a spaceship, acquires robot armor, and has a time machine with no issues. I've never seen a movie so insistent that our characters exist outside of the world and that nothing they do has any consequences beyond themselves. What I'm trying to say is that the characters and settings had no implications for the universe that they were in. The movie didn't care to address anything beyond the few characters that they wanted to highlight. It didn't make him feel like they were a small part of something bigger than themselves. There was no beyond, there wasn't even infinity. I have to mention that the animation is amazing. They absolutely nailed the style. I love how there's depth of field now. They really got reflections on the glass down. It looks incredible. But again, spectacle over substance is not a good way to go about your movie. At that point, you basically have Transformers Age of Extinction. In conclusion, you guys, if you want to watch a good Buzz Lightyear movie, just watch the first few minutes of Toy Story 2. It tells a better story. There's more emotion to it. It's more exciting and iconic. 
That's why I'm giving Buzz Lightyear a wait for streaming. That's right, you don't need to see this movie in theaters. If you want to take your kids to this movie, I'm not gonna stop you, but chances are it won't be their favorite and you can see if they like it when it's free on Disney+. Plus. Well, not free, I know that you pay for that ish. All right, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree with me that this movie wasn't very good or emotional? Or do you hate my stupid face and my opinions? Click that subscribe, like, and that bell for more reviews by an average guy for the average person. As always, Bryson, thanks for watching, and the rest of you, stay average.